We all know cattle can be dangerous. 2,400 pounds of anything, especially when it's angry or there's hormones or horns involved, can really wreck someone's day. I mean, wild cow milking is actually a rodeo sport. And that is exactly why everyone told me trying to milk my feral beef cow was a horrible idea. But the best way to get me to do anything is to tell me I can't. The first step in my maniacal plan is to build a giant catching device sturdy enough to hold the beast. All right, farmers are notorious for hoarding, and it's because of that that I think we have everything on hand from scraps and other things to be able to do this pretty efficiently. It is so hot outside. I think it's like 95 degrees or something like that, and this stuff is heavy, but that's exactly what we need. We need something that is going to be sturdy enough to withstand a bucking and kicking enormous cow. So far, we have an insulation pallet and the cutoffs of those trusses that you may remember me breaking a lot of OSHA rules to set. Now we just need to find some other materials and we'll build the walls in sections so that I can actually then take them up to the assembly area and assemble them. But it's shady in here and also we have a flat floor so we're gonna use that to our advantage. I feel like there's two kinds of people in the world. The people who are willing to make two trips and the people that are willing to sacrifice their pinkies taking all the groceries in on one trip. And that's exactly what we're gonna try to do here. So often our greatest strengths are also our greatest weaknesses. And for me, that's definitely the case. I am a person of action, which is great for getting the ball rolling, getting big projects started, but it's also forced me to realize that the more things I start, the harder it's gonna be to actually bring a lot of those things to completion. But I've been studying a lot about permaculture farming, thinking about permanent agriculture, thinking about this farm being a long-term investment instead of just whatever squirrels are running through my brain. That has affected the livestock that I've gotten. It's also affected the projects that I've wanted to take on. So while the impetus for this milk stand was that I wanted to catch my feral beef cow and actually try milking her, building a milking stanchion has been something that's been on my mind for a really long time. And as I started to kind of wing this project, I caught myself and I took a few steps back and I was like, okay, I want this project to actually serve me long term. If I'm going to take the time and the effort and the materials, maybe I should stop and give this a little bit more thought and take a little bit more time, a little bit more materials and actually do this thing the right way so that it can serve me longer term. So I decided to grow the design of this little milking stanchion and now it's become basically a tiny little barn which has definitely taken longer, has taken more materials, more thought, more effort, but I'm really excited about where it's going. All right, my friends, I'm ready to risk my life. I've got my calf trapped in this little containment area here. I have feed in the dish here. I'm just waiting for mom to come back and put her head in the stanchion. Then we'll close this up. Probably not right away. We'll let her like get some rewards first. And then hopefully she'll let me squeeze those sweet, beautiful teeth. We'll see. Come over here, maybe I have your snackies in here. Come on, buddy. We got you. I know this is weird. I get it. It's okay. I feel weird too. Like you could literally poke me to death right here and I'd be trapped. Look at your udder. It's so sore. We want to fix that for you, buddy. Yeah. Look who's right here. Here. Come on. He's right here. And guess what? There's some snacks for you in here too. Come here, baby. <laughs> All right, we're pulling out the big guns. We're getting some non-GMO, soy-free <laughs> grain. Just a taste, you little crackhead. Come here. Where are you going, silly goober? That's the wrong way. Where are your babies over here? Come on, baby. Patience is a virtue, especially in situations like this, because basically I just need to be patient and not try to force anything because forcing things will stress her out and make things more dangerous than they already are. Even milking trained dairy cows can be super dangerous. I myself actually sustained 
a pretty bad kick from Reba in a hormone-induced rage when I had first started milking. She punted me across the room and I was very lucky to have walked away from that incident without any further injuries than I did actually sustain. So when I brought my Dream Dexter pair home, I very naively thought I would be able to start milking maybe right away, but the difficulty we had loading them into the trailer and the very fact that their own owner couldn't even remotely approach either one of them without having them absolutely skitter to the other side of the field should have probably been a pretty big red flag. So I was like, okay, well, no problem. I'll just wait till next time. Well, Tyler quickly put an end to that dream because she was like, if you couldn't get her in the stanchion, if you couldn't catch her, if you couldn't milk her during her first calving season, what on earth would make you think that you'd be able to catch her after her second calf as a now four-year-old, fully mature cow. But it should probably be mentioned at this point that I'm a youngest child and no never really has meant no to me. No is like, well, maybe. And boy, howdy, did I want to milk maybe. Here we go. I was hiding behind the water trough for three hours this morning, waiting for the cows to come get a drink so I could get a second shot at the teats, for lack of a better term. Let's do this. There you go. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah. Come here, sweet girl. Well, we tried. We'll try again later. There we go. There's some high value treats. Some trust may have been lost. I'll just wait here. You take your time. Here we did it, Kathy. Think about your snack. Oh, yeah. There it is. There it is. There we go. There we go, buddy. Well, don't do that. Would it be possible for me to reach down and just get a little bit of your cheeks? Oh my god, it's happening. Oh my god, hold on. I seriously cannot believe this is happening right now. This is amazing. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So good. I can't believe we did it. Good, warm. What's that face? It's pretty sweet, but that also might be the gum. <laughs> Sideways. Are you chewing gum? Yeah, exactly. Good job. High five. I'm so proud. Don't tell me I cannot do something or I will do it. If you'd told me 10 years ago that I'd be sitting here today milking a feral beef cow, I would have laughed in your face because a few days ago, this cow would not even let me touch her and now I'm getting daily cream for my coffee. Most of my life, my family and friends and people that knew me called me Snow White because of the way that I seem to have with animals. A lot of that I think came from the fact that I was pretty badly bullied as a kid and I had it in my mind that animals were the one thing that would really never hurt me. But as a young adult, I started reading Temple Grandin's books. I was fascinated by the systems approach that she had to handling animals. Thinking about the way that the animal thinks instead of the way that we think 
is exactly why I came up with the design that I did for this stanchion. I haven't put the roof on it yet because I wanted to make sure that this was a light, airy structure where she felt comfortable walking into, not a dark enclosure where she felt like she was going to get trapped. Temple's books also helped me to understand so much more of who I am as a person and why it was so hard for me growing up to make friends and to relate with people and why I've always been drawn to animals the way that I have. Most of what I've learned has been thanks to the generosity of sharing from others. Reading books that I've checked out from the library, getting to spend time with people who are willing to freely share their knowledge has been hugely inspirational for me to pay it forward and to do the exact same thing, which is exactly why I've spent so much of the last decade collecting every lesson I could possibly learn and then sharing it with you for free on my Squarespace website, anavaltrades.com. There you can find my entire journey from planting my first seed and picking up my first tool to living here and getting to do all this fun stuff. Squarespace has been a fantastic resource for someone like me, who is not super tech savvy, to be able to easily drag and drop everything that I wanna share with the world into a beautiful artist design template that then shares it with the world. Squarespace also makes it really easy for me to have a digital marketplace where I can sell merchandise, project plans, online courses, and so much more. If you're interested in starting a website of your own, go to squarespace.com. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash trades for a 10% discount. I, I cannot believe this. What a world.